Me parece que una de las mejores cosas que ha sido es ser nuestro padre y proveernos de todo lo que tenemos a día de hoy. Me parece que es muy bueno como persona, como padre y como un amigo. My favorite thing to do with my dad is play baseball. My favorite thing to do with my dad is play hide and seek with him. My favorite thing to do with my dad is to ride a bike. Eh, jugar, bailar, eh, ir al cine con él, montar bicicleta con él. Um, a mí me gusta jugar a, um, afuera con él y jugar soque con mi hermano y, y mi papá. Practicar béisbol. Me gusta ir de compras con mi papá. Go out and like just be together or watch Star Wars movies, mar marathons. Um, putting movies on. Your favorite, your favorite movie too? Oh, The Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, does your dad like it too? He didn't watch it. No, he doesn't. He has never watched it. Cuando estamos en la piscina de mi amigo, Manuel, no, jugamos un montón ahí. Lay down on the sofa y ver televisión con él. Uh, I'll play with the Legos. My dad is my friend now. I like to help my dad. Going on a date with him when we go out together, just me and him. Play sports. Watch movies. Go to Publix because my dad always lets me get a sprinkle cookie. I like to play with my dad outside. Um, when um my dad sings, I sing along with him. Me gusta jugar baseball con mi papá. Maybe go to like dinner with him. Or, like he always does funny stuff, and like it really makes me happy. Pintar cosas. Como flores y mares y las cosas lindas. Play with him. Play with him. Soccer. Ir a un partido de soccer y que juguemos. Aunque él me vea mejor. Our favorite thing to do is uh, to fight, like a battle. And then the server wins, get to decide get who gets to do stuff. That's it. That's it. You're done. You did a great job. <laughs> All right, get up for those kiddos. All right, so it is a happy Father's Day, and also, you know, um, it's, it's a special day. As you can see, a lot of us wore our jerseys. Specifically, the, the FIFA World Cup has officially begun. Some people, some people are like, yeah, and some people are like, the what? Right? It's okay. It's okay. If you don't like soccer, it's okay. That's why I, I love to see. I'm seeing some football jerseys, baseball jerseys, basketball jerseys, and a lot of soccer jerseys representing the World Cup. Let me say something. The FIFA World Cup is the biggest single event sporting competition in the world. Something interesting about the the FIFA World Cup. Uh, the competition has been played every four years since the inaugural tournament in 1930, except for 1942 and 1946 when it was not held because of the Second World War. Now, if you don't know about the World Cup, the, the tournament currently involves 32 teams that are competing for the title at different venues at the host nation. This, uh, this year, it fell in, um, uh, in the, the country of Russia. Uh, the first phase is the, the preliminary or eliminatory phase is three years previous or prior to the year of the World Cup. So in the last three years, they've been playing all kinds of eliminatory phase games in order to see which teams are going to make it. Um, it's very interesting because um, th this uh, World Cup tournaments, even though about 200 uh, nations com like, and compete to try to win one of these 32 spots. And uh, in the last... Uh, ever since the competition started, there have been eight nations, uh, teams that have won the finals. Brazil has won five times. Uh, Italy has won four times. Germany has won three times. Argentina and Uruguay have two World Cup titles each. And England, France, and Spain have won. I'm praying for USA to one day. Yeah. Amen. Gotta have faith. Um, 
They're, so the USA didn't make it this year. It's okay. We're praying for them. 20, 2022, they're going to they're gonna make a comeback. Amen? So, so I thought it would be neat. I thought it would be neat because the excitement of seeing just beautiful, amazing goals. I want you guys to watch. These are 10 of, they say these are 10 of the most beautiful goals in the World Cup. Take a look at this video because I want to get pumped and excited for this message. Cool? Check this out. Check it out. And David Seaman's caught off his line, and Brazil take the lead. Ronaldinho has scored. David Seaman is caught cold. Oh, ho, ho. how about that? Ed Nielsen with one of the goals of the tournament. Pereira hit by Hammer. I just want you guys to know I could do that. I could do that. All right, so I want to know, is there anybody here who's pretty decent at soccer? Anybody who says, man, I, I love it. Anybody could juggle soccer, could juggle a little bit? Anybody who thinks they can do that competition? No? Anybody? Anybody thinks they might take the trophy home? Anybody? Anybody? Come on, Juan. Come on. I need one more. I need one more. Some, one more who says, I could do this. I could do a couple of juggles with a soccer ball, just like that. Just like I did it right there. You saw? Anybody? Anybody else? Anybody else? Pastor Kiko. Come on, Pastor Kiko. Come on, Pastor Kiko. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Everybody give it up for Pastor Kiko. It's all right. You don't have to give excuses about the shoes, please. All right. All right, so we got, we got Juan. Everybody give it up for our student director here at Vertical Church and Pastor Kiko. All right, so we're going to give you guys two opportunities, two opportunities to see if you can get the most juggles, all right? Anybody going to root for Pastor Kiko? Anybody rooting for Pastor Kiko? Anybody rooting for Juan Alzate? All right. All right, let's see who gets the pick. Let's see who gets the pick. A number one to five. Yes. Do you want to go first or second? Second. All right, Pastor Kiko. Kiko, Kiko, Kiko. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-three, give it up for Pastor Kiko. All right. 
Seems like he's played before, right? All right, give Juan, 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 Juan. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty, give it up, give it up. All right, all right. That's good. The competition is good. Thirty-one, right? All right, here we go. Pastor Kiko, one more chance, one more chance. You got it. Come on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 57, 57, all right, one more chance for Juan, let's do it, Juan, let's see if you got it. There was some it was inter, inter, interference, interference. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty. Give it up for Juan and Pastor Kiko. Great job. Much better than first service. Very good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. By the way, in order to win the competition outside, you must be a father, okay? All right, very good. Now, I have a question. I have a question. I want to know if there's any father here for the first time at Vertical Church today. Any first-time dad here? First-time dad. All right. This ball is for you, sir. If, JC, for, for Mr. Daniel right there. Very good. Let's give it up. Thank you for being here with us. A little keepsake. <laughs> so I want to talk to you guys today. I want to talk to you about how the World Cup is like the Christian life. The World Cup is like the Christian life. Some people said, what? Yeah, we're going to go. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go through it today. And I really want to, I want to just pray from the, from the beginning here. And I really want to pray that this word would encourage each one of us, no matter where we are, no matter where we're from, and no matter what we're going through. Can I get an amen? Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word today, to share these principles and these thoughts from your word, Lord. And I pray that each one of us, not only the fathers, but all entire families, we would be encouraged and blessed by your word, that we would be challenged by your word, and that we would realize that you've called us for great things. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So to, the title of today's message is The World Cup and the Christian Life. If you have your worship guide, you can open it up. We're going to take some notes along the way. We're going to read God's word along the way. And I want to start off with point number one. Good place to start, right? How is the World Cup like the Christian life? Point number one. There's a prize to win. I want you to fill in that blank and we're going to talk about it. The, one of the first reasons that the World Cup is like the Christian life is because there is a prize to win. Can everybody say a prize? There's a prize to win. The dream of every soccer player is to hold that World Cup in their hands in representation of their country, of their team. The goal is to win. Everybody say win. And the same goal goes for us as, as human beings, as walking on this earth. We want to win. Spiritually speaking, symbolically speaking, there is a prize to win. And I want us to read together Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. I want you to check out what Paul says in these verses. He says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing. Everybody say one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward. Looking where? Forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly what? Prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Pause for a moment. So, so just like in the World Cup, there is a World Cup, a prize to win for your team. In this life, we are called to press on or to push towards our heavenly prize 
for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. And, and I want to I kind of say this just from the beginning of the message, from the top. I believe it with all my heart. We believe this here in our church. There is a great prize to win, and God has this prize in mind for every single one of us. God desires for every single one of us to know him and to follow him and to win the prize. Who does God want to win the prize? He wants everyone to win the prize, but let me tell you, let me tell you something. you got to press on towards it. There is a prize to win. What do you mean, Pastor Verge? What do you mean a prize? Are you talking about like a trophy, like a spiritual? Listen, listen. In this life, the Bible teaches us that in the end, when our bodies here are, are finished, when, when our body physically takes its last breath, that is not the end of us. There is still, there is something to come, spiritually speaking. And that is when this prize comes into play. There is a prize to win. You can't buy it with money. You can't manipulate your way to get it. You can't get it because of your good looks or because of who you know or because of how good you are. There's only one way to obtain this prize, and it's through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Now, I want you to check out what Peter says. First Peter chapter 1, we're going to read verses 3 and 4, and then we're going to read verse 9. I want you to see how he puts it. It says, all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from what? From the dead, he rose into life, right? Now we live with great expectation, and it says in verse four, and we have a priceless inheritance. Another version says a, pr a prize, an inheritance or a prize that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of of change and decay. And look what it says in verse 9. It says the reward, the prize for trusting him will be what? The salvation of your souls. So what I'm, come, what I'm teaching and talking about today is not a physical or material prize, trophy, reward, uh, monetary in value. What I'm talking about today is something that is, is, goes beyond and further and deeper and is worth so much more worth so much more. I'm talking about the prize of the salvation of your soul. The prize of the salvation of our souls. This is the greatest prize that we could ever push towards or press on to. Now, what is this about, Pastor Virgil? I, I don't get it clearly. What is this about? Is this about a sporting event? Is this about, you know, how good I am? So, so let me tell you, let me talk to you a little bit about what, what, some of the false or wrong ideas about salvation and God that, that kind of are all, all out there in the world. A lot, of, a lot of us have heard this train of thought. Maybe we even have, have held this train of thought of, well, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I don't even kill a cockroach. That's how good I am. I'm so good. I'm so nice. Nobody has anything to say not bad or mean or wrong about me. And let me tell you something. It's not bad to be a good person. It's good to be a good person. But the Bible says that not by good works alone can man make it into heaven. In other words, there's nothing that you and I can do to deserve our entry into heaven. There's nothing that you and I can do to be, to be worthy of the gift of salvation. Why? Because each one of us are sinners. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you, but you're a sinner. And so am I. We all, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen what? Short of the glory of God. In other words, we've all sinned. We've all messed up at one point or another. We continue to mess up in life, uh, unfortunately, because we're human. We're in our fallen human nature. And therefore, there is no way that we can obtain it for ourselves. Now, there's some good news. Everybody say good news. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting eternal life. Here's the big mistake that a lot of us make in this lifetime, a lot of people in the world make, okay? We make the assumption that we are physical beings living a temporary spiritual experience here at church on Sunday morning. Uh-uh, incorrect. We are spiritual beings living a temporary physical experience here on earth. When we compare our life on earth and eternity, you actually, it's hard on this side of eternity to really capture and understand what that means. But with that being said, we are spiritual beings. There is a spiritual destiny to which we are headed. There's one or the other, biblically speaking. So the important thing that we need to understand is that there's a prize to win. And the only way to win this prize, to get this president and, and, and own it and have it is through God's son, Jesus Christ, and what he did on the cross. To, to, to win the prize in the World Cup, you got to be the best. 
to win the prize in the, in the Christian life, in life, you got to follow the best. Jesus did everything. Here, 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 I'll give this last example. If you gave me a gift, you gave me a present, hey, Pastor Verge, happy Father's Day or happy birthday, and, and, and you gave me a gift, right? Would that gift do me any good if I left it on the table, unwrapped, or wrapped up? No? No, right? I think all, all of us here might be guilty of at some point or another receiving a gift that we never used. Or receiving a gift card that got stuck in some kind of envelope that we never used, right? A lot of companies make money that way, right? Or, or, or getting something that we never put into effect, right? And I believe that a lot of people know about God and they know about his salvation, but the gift is on the table and it's never been unwrapped. It's never been unwrapped. And so I want to challenge us today to think about the fact that this is a spiritual gift that we're talking about, a spiritual prize. For us, winning means receiving salvation from God. It means being with Jesus for all eternity. Why? Because we have faith in the one who took the cross and died for our sins and rose again. And there's a big difference in this prize. And so my desire is at the end of the service, I'm going to extend an invitation for anybody who might say, man, I, I really want to receive that gift. I really want to take it, take it serious now. I don't want to take it for granted. You'll have that opportunity at the end. We'll have it all together. So the first thing, first way that the World Cup is like the Christian life is that there's a prize to win. Number two, you can follow along in your worship guide with me. Number two, there's a team to play on. There's a team to play on. The Christian life is also like soccer because we have a team to play on. Can I tell you something? There's no individual that's ever won a championship in any sport, team sport. There's never been a championship that's been won by one person against the whole team. Why? Because it takes a team. It takes a team effort to win the victory. There's a team to play on. It's about teamwork. Some of the greatest that have played, if we talk about soccer, we talk about Messi, and we talk about Ronaldo, we talk about Pelé from many, many years back. None of them have ever won a game by themselves. Can you imagine 11 versus 1? <laughs> you imagine what the result of that game would be? Same thing in basketball. You never, never see any of the legends that played by themselves. There's always a star. There's always somebody who, who really leads the team, but there's always contributing members. There's always a supporting cast. There's always a team to play. And the best teams, the best champions are teams that are united and that play well together. The Bible says that when we put our faith in Jesus, we become part of a new team. We become part of a church. We become part of a family and the way the Bible talks about this in different, is different comparisons. I want to look at a comparison that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you were here at Vertical Church about a month and a half or two months ago, I shared a message called Embrace Your Place. And we talked a little bit about this passage in 1 Corinthians 12. I want to read one verse. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, and it says like this. It says, the human body has many parts. How many parts? Many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with so it is, I'm sorry, with the body of Christ. So pause for a second. What it's saying is, is a body is made up of many parts, yet many parts make up one body. And it's the same thing. When we talk about the capital C church throughout the entire world, the capital C Christian church, all throughout the world, we're part of that body. But locally here, those of us who live here in South Florida and that maybe call Vertical Church our home, this is, this is also part of our team, part of our family. This is our church, and we are called to be united. We are called to play together. We are called to make a difference, to be on a team. If you recall the, the preaching that I shared about embracing your place, I, I shared the story of a couple of years back when I, I had a complete rupture of my ACL in my right knee, right? Now, now before, before that happened, I was playing soccer in Barranquilla, Colombia, and before that happened, that accident happened when I was playing soccer, um, I really didn't pay too much attention to, to, my, to my ACL, right? I, I didn't get up in the morning and say, how does my ACL look this morning? Like, I didn't do that, right? Like, like most of you don't do that. I, I didn't give two thoughts about... about uh, uh, a ligament that's, that's, that's the size of my pinky. And yet when that ligament wasn't in its place, fulfilling the responsibility that a ligament needs to fulfill, it affected the whole rest of my entire body. My rest of my body had to compensate for the weakness or the issue. And, and so it is when you and I are part of a team, but we're not playing our position. We're not fulfilling our role. We're not embracing the place that we've been given. We're not embla embracing the position that we've been given. And, and how awkward would it be if my hand decided that it didn't want to be a hand anymore? It wanted to be a liver. 
or my elbow wanted to be, you know, an ear. Like it, it, would, it wouldn't work because it's not designed that way. And so we also embrace the fact that God has designed each one of us in specific ways. He's given us spiritual gifts. He's given us uh, uh, passions. He's given us personality through, through the way our life, our life has, has, has kind of gone since we were born. And so all of this God's put in our design. And we have learned here at Vertical Church that our design reveals our destiny. The way God made you and me, and me it reveals where he wants to use you and me. And so a team consists of, uh, and if we talk about soccer, you think about the goalie, right? What's the goalie's job? Defend our goal. No, no, no ball is getting into this net because I'm defending this goal. Then you have the defensive line who has the same responsibility to defend, to, to defend when the, uh, the, the offensive uh, uh, team uh, members of the opposing team come and try to score. We're going to defend. Then you have the midfielders, and the midfielders have to fulfill the responsibility of running forward and, and helping pass and support the forwards and also coming back and helping defend when needed. And then you have the forwards, the offensive line, the forwards that are there to try to score the goals and try to, to try to put one in on the other side, right? And every position, every player has a role. And I want to tell you, there's a team to play on in the Christian life. And, and no matter where you live or where you're from, find a good church. Get connected. Find your position. Find your role and play it the best that you can. And you will find great fulfillment from serving God, loving God, serving people and loving people. Greater fulfillment than just watching from the stands on a seat. Also, nobody likes a ball hog. Play with your team. Pass the ball. Encourage others. Invite people to play with us. You're part of the team. Be a team player. Never forget, when you become a Christian, you join a team. So number one, there's a prize to win. Number two, there's a team to play on. You guys following me, yeah? Number three, there's training to be done. <laughs> there is training to be done. Any winning team in any sport. Some of us watched the finals in basketball recently. The Golden State Warriors took it, man. Man. Okay. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You can tell when you watch the Golden State Warriors play that they are united. They are deep. Every player, even the ones on the bench that come on, they know their role. They're supporting. They're, they're encouraging. They know their positions. There's a chemistry. There's a unity about it. Amen? Can I get an Amen. I'm praying for that unity for the Miami Heat, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, bring LeBron back, Lord. Bring LeBron back. Amen. God hears our prayers. Amen. You got to declare. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're not kidding, Lord. We're for real. There's training to be done. There's training to be done. Dolphins need some prayer too. Amen. Marlins, all the Florida teams need prayer. Let me, let me, see something. Let me, let me tell you something. When you see athletes that are at the top of their game and teams that are at the top of their game, you better believe they're training. You better believe they're training. And let me ask you a question. Do you think, you think these professional athletes, do you think they train one day a week? you think they train a couple, day, couple weeks of the year? They train all the time. They train all the time. They train all the time. Why? Because if you want to win, you have to train. And how do you have to train? You have to train hard. You have to train for real. And the Christian life is no different. You have to train. When does our training begin? Our training begins after we receive Jesus and we start, we start, we get on the team. Our training begins. And just like the Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, I want you guys to check this out. I want you to kind of put the comparison and, and, and I want you to see um, how this really applies. 1 Timothy 4 verses 7 and 8. It says, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas. How many times are we wasting time talking about foolish things in life, right? Don't waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be God. Can, can, can everybody say that with me? Train yourself to be godly. Godly. That's a word that we should have more in our vocabulary. I want to be a godly man. Tra it says train yourself to be godly. Verse 8, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Why? Because it, it promises benefits in this life and in the life to come. See, on this side of eternity, all we see is this life. This, it's this big. Eternity, whoosh, this big. And, and, so he, and so here's the deal. Does that mean that we don't want to train physically? No. Training physically is great, and it brings great results and great uh, uh, effects when? Now, in this life, on this earth. But when we train in godliness as well, guess what happens? It benefits, in, benefits us not only in this life, but in the life to come. Train yourself to be godly. 
Physical training has great value, but, but godly training, it goes beyond. What is that? Pastor, what does that mean exactly? It means learn to take your spiritual roots and go deeper. It's impossible to train well if you're not on a team. So that's the first thing. If you haven't found a good spiritual church family to get connected to, it's going to be really, really hard to train well. To know, you got to know God, and you got, you got to join a team, and you got to, and you got to work on this. You got to train. Another way we train, another way we train hard, another way we train well is by getting into God's word. God's word is so powerful, and some of us have never read it, even though we have two or three laying around at home. God's word is so powerful. Another way that we train is we connect with the right people. We talked about it, being on the team. When you're connecting with other people who are training well, guess what? It's going to spill into your life because you're going to want to train well. Another way you train well is when you worship God with freedom and you seek God. Another way you train well, spiritually speaking, is when you connect with people who are doing, who are doing it as well. Another way you train hard is when, you, is when you pray and you seek God in prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is when I talk to God. I don't know what to say to God. Just talk to him like you would talk to your friend, to your family member. That's the communication. I, I pray, prayer is when I speak to God. His word is when he speaks to me. It's communication. No communication can, can thrive unless there's communication. And so training. When we say no to what is wrong, why? Because we want to build up our godly muscles. We choose to do what's right in God's eyes. We build up our godly muscles. Let, let me tell you what happens is when you train spiritually, you begin to see fruit. Like if you see a tree and you, and you say, I wonder, what kind of, I wonder what kind of tree it is. If you see an orange hanging off of the, tr of the branch, what kind of tree is it? It's an orange tree. Why? Because you see the fruit. If you see an apple, what kind of tree is it? It's an apple tree. Now, now what if an orange tree says, if you see a tree and it has oranges and it's saying, I'm an apple tree. It's deceiving itself. Why? Because the fruit you see is orange, right? And in our lives, what's the fruit? It's, it's the words that come out of our lips. It's the way we live our lives. It's the way that we interact in our interpersonal relationships. It's the decisions that we make when people are looking and when people are not looking. That's the fruit in our lives, right? The, the fruit tells you what kind of tree it is. And so the fruit in your life and mine, the way we speak, the way we interact, the way we live our lives, the way we handle our marriages if we're married, the way we handle our single life, single life if we're single, the way we, we manage uh, our responses, the way we live our lives is the fruit. And I think so many people are trying to say, I'm an apple tree, but that's not what you're seeing. And a lot of times we, we're, we're saying we're some kind of tree, but the fruit in our lives is not showing it. Our fruit will always tell what's inside. And so I want to encourage you in your spiritual training and growth. L listen, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and effort and intention, just like all these athletes. It doesn't happen overnight. It's days and weeks and months and years of training and preparation, but they all, all of them had to start somewhere. And so maybe it's time to start for you. Maybe it's time to pick up that old ba gym bag, spiritually speaking, that you hadn't picked up in a while and get those muscles flowing again. Can I get an amen? So there's a prize to win. There's a team to play on. There's training to be done. And number four, there's a captain to follow. There's a captain to follow. Now, the interesting thing is, even when you watch the World Cup games, a lot, they'll give a lot of attention to the players on the field, but they'll give a lot of attention also to the man in the suit or in the, in the warm-up suit right on the outside on the sideline who's the coach, right? And it's great because the teams have, usually a good team has a really good coach. But on the field... There's always a captain. There's always a captain, a team captain. Now, this team captain is, 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 the, is, is the one who's modeling what should be done, what shouldn't be done. This team captain is giving instructions. This team captain is in charge on the field. you got to follow your team captain. you got to be listening to instructions of the team captain. Let me tell you, in our spiritual walk, in the Christian life, our team captain is Jesus. And so we listen to Jesus' teaching from his word. We listen to Jesus' teaching through his Holy Spirit in us. And as we're playing a game of soccer, as we're living the game of life, as we're living our lives out, we have to be obedient to our captain. You know, the word captain is very similar to the word uh, Lord in a parallel uh, symbolism, but Lord is much stronger. And the job of our captain or our Lord Jesus is to keep us playing well. 
And so we have to listen to his commands. We have to do everything that he tells us to do. Sometimes we forget we have a captain and we want to do whatever we want to do. I want to look at whatever I want to look at. I want to go out with whoever I want to go out with. I want to do whatever I want to do. I want to sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. I want to drink whatever I want to drink. And we, and we live our life in a way where we're satisfying the desires of our flesh and what we want to do. And we live as if we had no captain. And it takes us on side trails and it takes us on directions that, that aren't, first of all, they're not pleasing to God. And second, they're not edifying for us or healthy either. Because we lose that connection with our captain. And it's so important. It's so important for every, every solid team, every strong team, every good team to really do what it needs to do, man. They have to be united, but they have to have a good leader. And let me tell you something. We have the best leader in the Christian life. We have the best leader. Leads in the way of love. Leads in the way of mercy. Leads in the way of forgiveness. Leads in the way of example. Leads in the way of godliness uprightness, just, honest, and all the things that we admire and love about people, man, we see it in Jesus, and sometimes we don't see it in us because we're not following the captain. So I want to encourage you in that. There's a captain to follow. There's a prize to win. I want to win, win that prize, man. I want you to win that prize. I, wanna, I want us to hold up that trophy together, the trophy of salvation. There's a team to play on, everybody. There's, there's a team to play on. Our team is better. The more, the more we have, the more talents we have, the more abilities we have, the more passion we have, the better our team is going to get. Let me tell you, you, have a, you, you can play. A, you, you are awesome at one of the positions on this team. Find it. How do we do that here at Vertical Church? We have our vertical growth track. It's four classes, four steps we have. First, second, third, and fourth Sunday of every month where we help people walk through our vertical growth track. And one of the classes which is today, Discovery 301, we do a spiritual gifts assessment, we do a personality assessment, and we do a passions assessment. Why? Because we want to help you discover how God designed you. Because how God designed you determines what position you play, where you're going to be the best fit, in, in the context of church, in the context of life. And we believe that with all of our hearts. And so we want to encourage you. There's a team to play on. Hey, th there is training to be done, everybody. There's training to be done. And just like it might happen to us physically where we, where we kind of fall off the, the trail of, of working out or eating healthy or doing whatever we, we wanted to do, we got to come back. We got to come back to it. We got to come back to it. We got to work hard. Amen? You got to press on towards that prize. And lastly, there's a captain to follow. There's a captain to follow. You know, I, before I extend an invitation to take a step to towards God by saying the prayer of faith, which we're going to do in a few moments. I want to say this. Be careful not to celebrate too early. Have you ever seen a team celebrate too early before the game's actually over? I want you guys to take a look at this video, okay? This is, by the way, this is not a World Cup uh, moment, but it's a soccer game. And I want you to watch what happens with this premature celebration by the goalie. Check this out. Let's watch that one more time, production team. If we can put that one more time. Watch this, watch this. Watch it again. Penalty kick. Goalie is celebrating. Ball still in play. All right. Is that crazy or what? Is that crazy or what? Okay, so for those of you who don't understand, when at the end of a game, if they have to go to penalties, penalty uh, is kicked. Usually the ball just goes out of bounds and it's out of play, but this ball never goes out of bounds. It comes and it bounces back in. There was a premature celebration by the goalie. Isn't that crazy? Now, now you know what's funny? I think this is a picture of what we see nowadays. I think there are so many people who are prematurely celebrating because they think they're good enough. They think they know the right people. They think they, they have enough. And mistakenly, we actually think that we have a victory that we haven't yet won. 
And there are so many people that I've talked to throughout the years and even nowadays that, that not by my standards, not by because of what I say, but because of what God's word teaches, sometimes our lives aren't lining up with God's standards and principles and his vision for our lives. And yet we are so convinced that we got it made to just sadly realize at some point that we were wrong. And so I want to I just extend this invitation right now because I really feel with all my heart, just like we did in first service this morning, if you don't know God, we want to extend an invitation so that you can know God. If you feel far from God, you don't have to stay feeling that way. If you've known God in the past, but you've, you've strayed away, you can come back. So I want to extend this invitation to say what we call the sinner's prayer, right from, your, right from your seat, right from where you are, right in your heart. Why? Because we've come to understand as a church that we all need Jesus. We all need him. We all need him. Here's the mistake that a lot of people make. Oh, God, me and God, we are so good. God and I, we're homies. God and I, I'm such a spiritual person. The only thing, I know, Pastor Rich, I don't go to church and I do things your way. I do God my way. I do it my way. That's the first sign of somebody who doesn't know God. You can't do God your way. I can't do God my way because then you're God and I'm God. You do God God's way. There's no other option. That's human reasoning and self by psychology of, of figuring it out that I do it my way. You never do God your way. You do God God's way. And here's the other mistake that I see a lot. Here's another mistake I see a lot. If I say, if I say, how many of you guys know, how many of you guys know about, about Ronaldo or Messi in soccer? How many of you guys know about them, right? Yeah, we all know about them, right? A lot. We know how many goals he scored last game. We know what team he plays on. Might even know what favorite ice cream is if we read an interview or something, right? It's very different to know about Ronaldo, but now what if I ask this question? Anybody here know Ronaldo? You know him? You know him? I know you're playing around, but you don't know him. Do you know him? Do you know Ronaldo? No, you don't know him. Do you know Ronaldo? No. Can you call him right now on your cell phone? No. So, uh, so the answer to do you know about Ronaldo is yes. Then the answer to do you know Ronaldo is no. Here's the question. Here's the question. Do you know about God? going to church since I was a kid. I know people that have been in church all their lives and don't know God. So, so the question is, do you know about God? Yeah, I've, I've heard stories. I've read the Bible. This and that. Now here's the question. Pause, pause, pause. Let's take it back. Do you know God? Do you know God? If there's any hesitation, well, I'm not sure. Maybe any hesitation, I'm not sure if you know him. So, do you know God? If the answer is, man, I know him. God is my, Jesus is my savior. I accepted him as my Lord and savior when I made that decision on whatever day. And, and I am because of what Jesus did for me, I am saved and I love God and I speak to him in prayer and he speaks to me through his word and I have a relationship with him. Man, I know God. You see how there's no hesitation when you know somebody? Some of you here, it's the first time I've seen you or met you or maybe I don't know too much about you. I know about you, but I don't know you. But if you ask me if I know my wife, do I know Jesus? I know Jesus. That's my wife. That's my girl. There's no hesitation. It's like, well, you know, it's been, you know, almost 21 years now. There's no hesitation. It's clear. I know her. And, and, he, and here's the deal. It is our prayer and our desire that every person here, that there would be no hesitation. And you would say, man, I know God. Maybe it was because last week I came to Vertical Church and I was... I was presented, God, God, I was presented a real God who wants to know me in a relationship. And, and I made that decision. And I understand that I'm a sinner. And I, I repented and I asked Jesus to forgive me and, and to come into my life. And I made that decision. Man, I know God now. I started. I just started. I'm getting to know him, but I know him. We want you to get there. And if, if you knew him well, way back, but you've just gotten disconnected along the way, we want you to recommit your life to Jesus today. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah? All right. Let's, let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Before we say this prayer together, if you're here today, and maybe you say, you know what, Pastor Virgil, this is for me, man. I realize I, I know a lot about God, but I don't really know him. 
I've, I, I've heard a lot about religion and religiosity, but I, I really, it's never really been real for me. If that's you, this moment's for you. If you're watching online right now and this is resonating with you right now, this is for you. If you're here and maybe you, you, you said a prayer like this at some point, but you just, your life just isn't matching up. The fruit in your life is not showing that that's the kind of tree that your life is. And, and you say, you know what? I need to make, make, make some adjustments. I need to make a decision today. If that's you today and you say, Pastor Virgin, include me in this prayer. I want to be, I want to make this decision. I realize I need this for me today with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you say, Pastor Virgin, include me. This is for me. Just raise your hand really quick. I want to see who we're praying for today. Amen. I see anybody else. I see it. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, guys. If you're online, this is for you too. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you, church, church, all of us, I want all of us to repeat this prayer for the benefit of those who maybe are recommitting today or, or giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. Everybody together, say, thank you, God, for loving me and forgiving me. I recognize I'm a sinner. I've messed up. I need forgiveness. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to pay the price for my sins on the cross. I believe it and I confess it that Jesus died and he rose to life to forgive me, save me, and give me life. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Make me a new person. Change my life. I want to follow you as my captain. I want to play on your team. And I want to live the life that you had in mind for me. So I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Go! The biggest victories, the biggest celebrations, the biggest goals in the Christian life and in our church is when people make a decision in their spiritual walk. And I'm so encouraged today by your decisions. I'm so encouraged. If you said that prayer for the first time today or recommitted your life to Jesus again today, please let us know through one of these connection cards in the seat back pocket in front of you. It says, my decision today. Please don't hesitate to do that because this is the way we count the victories and the goals that we score here at Vertical Church for the Lord. We're so proud of you. If you're watching online, write us a comment. We want to know if you made a decision. Amen. We're going to close off service as we do every week by giving to God what is His. We're going to present our tithes and offerings to the Lord as the worship team sings this next song.